What's up, ladies? This is Alex from Mindful Attraction 2.0. What? Oh, oh, and, and Missy too. My bad. Sorry about that. Um, in today's video, we are going to be talking about how to stop being a pushover girlfriend and stand up for yourself, all right? Because I... Oh, you want to go down? Okay. Because a lot of people think that... A lot of people who are pushovers, they think they're being pushed over because the world is bad and because they're nice people, right? They're, they're, they've been wronged by life and, and, and I've been too nice and, and the world is not fair and all that sort of stuff, right? One second. Okay. But the thing is, is that most people are welcome, most women particularly are walking around expecting the fantasy relationship along with your white and shining armor, armored guy. Okay. Sorry about that, I fucked up. But the thing is that most people are walking around expecting a relationship, expecting happiness, expecting everything to work out perfectly. You see, you think that everyone is here to help. Most people, they believe that. They, they, they are very optimistic towards the world. They give everyone the benefit of the doubt. You know, nothing wrong with that. But there, there is a middle path behind this, right? You think that people don't have their own self-interest in mind, that just because they're so, they show how, self, um, in, how, how um, unselfish they are, that means that's how they really are. You see, this is how children think because they lack experience. This type of this this type of thinking leaves you open to attacks and manipulation from very ruthless people, and in this case, men. You see, and the reason why you not just men in general, also, but also just the whole world with that that you encounter. So you need to know that when and how, you need to know when and how to be bad. Particularly if you're someone who identifies as a nice person, because you're more susceptible to be taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. um, this means learning how to redirect, conceal your intention, deceive, and at times use direct force. But when you're too nice, when you're trying to get, it, when you're trying to be on everyone's good side, when when it's time for you to defend yourself, you quibble. You need to, um, you got to put your self interest first, or else you won't be able to help others if that's your goal. You got to put yourself first. You see, the blind cannot lead the blind. There are times when you have to adjust your morality just to find your own happiness or just to achieve your goals. Like, I'm not talking about fucking bombing motherfuckers. No, I'm talking about that if you have to fire someone you like, you got to say, look, man, I like you. You're my homie, but we can't work together no more. I got to fire you. You see, it's, it's the inability for you to confront people. We're going to talk about that. Realize that the reason you don't stand up for yourself isn't because you're too nice or moral but afraid and you lack the internal fortitude to deal with the conflict that presents, that presents you. You see, you got you to gotta realize that when you have that, you're going to always, when it's time for you to stand up for yourself, which is during those moments that you begin to respect yourself more when you're standing up for yourself, regardless of the outcome, is when you have to be a little bit more forceful. You see, fear enhances the perceived power of your enemy and lowers yours. See, when you're afraid to, conf to confront people, when you're afraid to confront their disappointed face, you're giving them too much power. And, and the problem is that power is an illusion. So that means you're, you're going to be self-imposing limitations on yourself because when you see them, you're going to react. Oh, I'm afraid. I don't want to do nothing. I don't want to stand up for yourself, for myself. See, so that happens what happens then is now you lower your own power. You, have, you feel weaker. You see, so in your mind, rather than confront the person, you take, you take your losses and keep everything in order. Rather, that, rather than confront them about, her, about that late text he got last night, you don't, you don't say nothing because you don't want him to dump you. You see, rather than talk to your boss and stand up for yourself, you don't say nothing because you're afraid of the repercussions. For those who, know, who don't know about my channel, I actually learned. See what I just said right there? You know. So as a result, so your defensive shield becomes your desire to be liked. You see that? So, so rather than confronting people, your shield, you put down your sword and you just pick up your shield. And you begin using, trying to be liked as your own shield. You must stop this. Put down your armor and take some hits and learn to feel some pain from time to time. You see, you got you to stop trying to not feel pain. You see, you think not trying to feel pain means avoiding pain. No. You got to confront the pain, go towards it, go towards your confrontations, go towards the wars, go towards your enemies. When you face your enemies, you become stronger because it's either living or dying. It's either surviving or dying, <laughs> right? It's true though. 
You see, because when you confront someone, you feel that surge of adrenaline. You feel good about yourself. You feel empowered when you confront someone based on facts that you believe you are wrong. You see, so so we got we got a lot more to talk about, right? So feeling pain me, means not being willing to displease people. I mean, feeling pain means not being being willing to displease people and be there without losing self-esteem. It's being to say no to someone without giving a fuck. Actually, without giving a fuck, but with understanding. You know, you don't want to be a, you don't want to give a fuck without having empathy. You know what I'm saying? So they don't they, because the thing is is that. You don't give a fuck because they don't define you no more. Their reactions don't define you no more. So you don't react. They have no control over you. But this requires experience. And that means dealing with pain directly. This requires you continually putting yourself in situations to feel pain. Because you got to realize that the training ground is, in the, is where the pain lies. And also, the training ground is in letting go of pleasure. Which means... Displeasing people who act nice, saying that because think about it. If you're if you displease someone, that means that they cannot please you no more. That means that pleasure that you once had, you're literally having to let go of it. So as a result of dealing with conflict directly, right, and not being unhinged and not being afraid to get hurt, you send signals out into the world that you're not to be fucked with, that there are dire consequences for messing with you. See, make sure this is fucking charged. I mean, recording. Last time I didn't record. Right? And the other thing is that bullies, when they believe that there's a victim that's not going to fight back, that's isolated, doesn't have a lot of allies, emotional e- emotional support, or the mental or the mental fortitude to withstand attacks from bullies, verbal, emotional, they're going to feel that. And what they feel is your inability to fight back. As a reason, so, okay. So there, so there are consequences of dealing with you. Realize that when someone doesn't get this signal, they are going to attack and attempt to control you for their own self-interest. This, is, this world is competitive, and it hides its competitive nature with false acts of kindness and humility to deter you from their true nature. Someone, sometimes the, worst peop, the meanest people are the ones that you, that you would never expect. Except me, I'm super nice. I'm a very nice person. Realize that. <coughs> Don't die. <coughs> Excuse me. Realize that. Realize that what will separate you from evil, ruthless people is that you don't act reactively. You see? You act consciously. You have control. In other words, your enemy is going to attack, right? The way the enemies attack, they attack and they're ruthless because they're fucking ruthless. It's in their nature. You, on the other hand, I want you to learn how to be a little bit ruthless, a little bit Machiavellian-like, a little bit more selfish. If you're not selfish, if you're just too nice, I want you to venture into the dark side, right? Because what's going to happen is that you're going to consciously make tough decisions, consciously stand up for yourself, consciously attack and counter when you're attacked. You see, consciously create a strategy to escape your situation. You're not, you're, you're not seeing the situation and reacting and attacking because you're hurt. No, you're seeing the situation, you're hurt, and then you think about what to do next. Your, your, your decision is not based on the pain. Your decision is based on a vision. You see? And so what happens is that when you're like one of those crazy motherfuckers who, who, just, who are ruthless, what's motivating them is fear. What's, what's, what's motivated them is they're more unconscious than anything else. I want you to be conscious. I want you to attack what, with presence of mind, with a clear mind. You can let your enemy get, get crazy while you remain still. Because if you're not, if you're not still, you cannot think into the future. You can, if you're not still, you're not able to strategize. If you're not still, you're not able to realize that you have to sacrifice short-term for long-term benefits. And that means... Facing the pain, facing the people who you don't want to face because you realize that this, if you don't do it, this creates a negative habit in your life. Because what happens is if you don't, if you're attacked by your enemy and you let people take advantage of you, you become someone who you, who you're going to look at in the mirror and you're going to have no respect for. You're going to become someone who you are, who you don't want to be. You want to begin having a self image of someone who's deserves respect and demands respect. You, you get angry when you think of yourself being a pussy. So what do you do? You say, ah, fuck that shit. I'm not a bitch. I'm going to attack my fears. You see, because when you have an image of yourself of how you are, and then your reality isn't reflecting it, 
You have the choice of either allowing the reality to consume your self-image or allow your self-image to consume your reality. And so you say, yo, fuck that shit. I see myself as someone who should be respected. Fuck that. I'm going to confront my enemies now because of it. You're not confronting your... So you're being... You're thinking. You're thinking. You see? Hopefully that makes sense. So how do you recognize people who will try to take advantage of you? It's important to do that, right? So recognizing the aggression, you must recognize them in time because they are easily disguised. See, Robert Greene says, these types are masters at disguise. They present themselves as weak and helpless or highly moral and righteous or friendly and ag um, aggregating. This makes them hard to pick at a first glance. They send all kinds of mixed signals, alternating between friendly, cool, and hostile, creating confusion and conflicting emotions. If you try to call them out on their behavior, they use this confusion to make you feel guilty. Um, as you, as if, it, as if it was you, the one who was the source of their problem. Once you are drawn into their dramas with emotions engaged, um, it can be very difficult to detach yourself. The key is recognizing them in time to take appropriate action. So with these, you just you're, the key to this is that when you're noticing that someone's trying, that when when you're noticing that you're in the front of someone who will easily try to take advantage of you. Now, mind you, aggressors are people who are directly aggressive. We're talking about indirect people, passive aggressive kind, the ones that are that the the ones that are hovering in our daily lives and we just don't notice. You see, with these people, the key is to not get emotional and respond with, with passive aggressive. We're passive aggressive. You don't respond to these people with passive aggression because they're doing, they're, they're, they're much better at it than you are. And you're falling into the trap. The way to deal with them is to take a strong and direct action and don't compromise. You see, the only response that they, that they will respond to is to power and leverage, like Robert Greene said. So that means that if like someone's fucking with you, right? And, and you're noticing that, you gotta fucking end that shit. If you if you're noticing your friend is continually taking advantage of you, don't try to talk it out. End it. If someone's always cheating on you, don't talk it out. End it. Don't let them try to say, oh, you know, I'll change one day and you feel bad. No, 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 fuck that shit. End it. To recognize such types, Robert Green says, um, look for extremes in behavior that are not natural, too kind, too aggr uh, aggregating, too moral. These are not. These are most likely disguises that are worn to deflect attention from their true nature. Better to be proactive and take precautionary measures the moment you feel that they're trying to get. They're trying to get in your life. You got to be looking out for them. The problem is that when you're looking out for your relationship, when you're looking for the dream relationship. You're not going to be looking for those signs. You're going to be looking for something that looks like the relationship. Anything that resembles your, rela your ideal relationship, you look for it. You see? And so you're not really grounded in reality. You're going to see the signs and you're not going to see them because you're looking for something else. You see negative signs? Ah, nah, fuck that shit. Let me look for the good signs. And so you compartmentalize a person because of your emotional bias. So when you feel that people... So what do you do when people are taking advantage of you? Right? What do you do? Conceal your intentions and don't try to fight them directly. Bait them into action that will make them make others sympathize to you. For example, let's say that you are a dad on child support, right? And your baby mama is bawling with your money, right? Don't try to fight it. Don't try to look miserable. I mean, I mean, the thing is, okay, what happens is that most guys, in order to gain people's sympathy, they're going to talk shit. Oh, fuck that bitch. The system is fucked up. Fuck that bitch, it's ugly anyways. Or you know, like they'll try to be aggressive. They'll talk to they'll talk to the to the people. They'll, they'll start talking shit on the mother, on his on their baby mama. See, that's a direct attack. The way that you should do is this. If you feel like you're being taken advantage of in any situation, act like the victim. Don't fight them. Bait them into attacking you so that people can see that you're helpless. So that people can see that they're not really the, the victim. You are the victim. See, rather than complaining about not being being broke, show that you're broke. You know, like I'm talking as an example. Like as an example, as a guy who has child support unfairly, show that you're broke. So pro, um, Facebook posts of you being broke and shit, eating ramen noodles and shit, saying this is the only thing I have. Like literally, sh make sure people see how miserable you are so people can feel sympathy. That's the indirect way to attack. See what I'm saying? Um, and so that's one thing. The crowd will see you as the underdog and turn against her. Another situation is that when you're in the situation that you can't get out of like a job or you hate a person and you're with them and they're abusing you, 
Just like I said earlier, these kind of people would respond to force and respect force. Your solution is to leave with these kind of guys, right? Don't bargain with them or compromise. Don't let them say, "Oh, you know, baby, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll you know, I won't, I won't fuck her no more." You know, I won't, one, one more time, but I won't fuck her no more at that, that, that one time. Like, don't compromise. They'll be like, "Okay, you know, yeah, he said he's not gonna do that no more. Yeah, sure, it's a tenth time he lied to me, but I let me give him one more chance." This sense is important so that they won't emotionally entangle you. This is the thing is that when you, you with these people, if it's your job, quit it. You see. If you're, if, you're, if you're with someone that's abusing, you got to end it. Now, I know situations are tough, right? So you got to think ahead. You got to have your own support system. That's something that I recommend you go get. Go to your, 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 your public, wherever, the public place, wherever the hell you are, and see if they can have any help. Because I'm, you know, I'm not qualified to talk about emotional abuse and all that sort of stuff, you know. But this is my, the way I like to see it, all right? So with these kind of people is that you got to break it off, but they're going to try to make you feel guilty. Right, so we th- with these kind of the key is no, don't feel guilty when you're ending it, the ending the friendship, ending the relationship. Don't feel guilty, cause that's how they control you. Key, realize nothing is personal. People are dealing with their own problems. If you take their attacks personal, you'll see the truth. Come out emotionally on um on 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 on. Come out emotionally unscarred and even enjoy the conflict because you are not invested in it anymore. You are detached. In other words, realize that most people, when people attack you, it's not personal, right? So if somebody's trying to verbally abuse you, trying to bully you, as long as it's not physical, you want to get to the point where you see them and you realize what's really going on. To the point that when they try to attack you, it doesn't even hurt you no more because you know the reality of the facts that they're really in pain. You see, heck, even they are. Even, there's gonna come a point where you even, when you even engage with them in their senseless little battle, detached and inside you're smiling, and they're all serious. And inside you don't give a fuck. Do you want to play with your opponent like that? As long as you're able to do it, right? But you gotta have this playful attitude towards people that are trying to put you down and see them as children who cannot control themselves. When you do that, you suddenly have this ability to step out of yourself. And to see the problems and to see people who are taking advantage of you in an, un, in, an, in, an, in an objective perspective. You'll be able to see the reality of the facts is not really as powerful as you think they are. And you're not as weak as you think you are. We always overestimate our enemies and underestimate ourselves. And so the more you do this, the more you continually stand up for yourself. The first time is going to be hard. But the more you do it, the easier it's going to become and the more pleasurable it's going to become. Now, don't grow an ego behind it. Don't, be the, don't begin becoming someone who says, I'm the type of person who stands up for myself. And then suddenly, you're not really taking action because of, because of you being strategic. You're taking action because you're saying, I got to live up to this self-image that I have of myself. Now, you're reactive. Now, you're living in fear. Now, you're back to step one. But the ego has its ways of sneaking, into the, sneaking in the back door. I'm telling you. Sneaky fucker. Woo. Deep topic. I really hope this makes sense, man. This is a, I've been I've been procrastinating making this video in a um after in in a while. So um I hope you guys enjoy it. Oh man, I've been making videos, have I, right? No, I haven't. Um I haven't been feeling that much motivation. Um I don't know how long I'm gonna be making videos to be quite honest with you. It's gonna depend on my level of motivation. Most of the time I, the way I've moved to do things is through impulse, it's not through sheer discipline. Unfortunately, I'm not that kind of person, self-image. Um, but we'll see. Right, we'll see. Hopefully, I'll, I'll get the motivation once again. But, you know, you guys have a lot of videos. You know? You guys have a lot of videos to work with. So, you guys better enjoy these videos. This, this is not something that comes often, right? Um, anyways, take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.